The goal of medicine is to provide patients with hope, and when there is no hope, to offer understanding. For the first time in the history of this disorder, we have a chance to provide Alzheimer's patients with hope instead of well-meaning but helpless understanding. I'm Mike, and in this video, the real reason people get Alzheimer's, how you can silence Alzheimer's genes, and what the science is showing us is the best way to prevent Alzheimer's. This is one that I put a little bit of extra effort into researching over the years because my grandmother had Alzheimer's and as a toddler she lived with us and it was pretty brutal and as a family we didn't really know what caused it but now with new information it's clear that all that suffering was unnecessary. It was also unnecessary for people like Ronald Reagan and it's definitely unnecessary for the 11% of Americans over 65 who have Alzheimer's. Now for the main reason Alzheimer's is so preventable. Alzheimer's is the mental equivalent of heart disease. It is clogged arteries of the brain. This picture speaks for itself. Autopsies of normal brain arteries compared to the clogged brain arteries of people with Alzheimer's. These clogged brain arteries aren't just a byproduct of Alzheimer's any more than a gunshot wound is a byproduct of being shot. It is the mechanism in which sections of the brain die off. As you may know, fat and cholesterol clogging the arteries is referred to as atherosclerosis, and atherosclerosis is reversible. Even back at the discovery of the disease over a hundred years ago, Dr. Alzheimer's himself noted when looking at the brain that, quote, the larger vascular tissues show arteriosclerotic change. In other words, Ms. Dieter, the first Alzheimer's patient, had atherosclerosis of the brain. That should have been a smoking gun, but it was largely ignored until recently. Here's a study in the journal Alzheimer's in Dementia that said, quote, a substantial body of evidence amassed from epidemiologic, correlative, and experimental studies strongly associates atherosclerotic vascular disease with Alzheimer's disease. In normal English, it was the clogged arteries, President Reagan. So when does all this begin? Well, in the body in general, it starts really early. In a more recent and depressing study, they found that, quote, almost every North American child over the age of three years has some degree of aortic fatty streaks, aorta being the largest artery in your body. The good news is that atherosclerosis is a result of diet, and diet can be changed. Here is a paper that was co-authored by William C. Roberts, a doctor from the American College of Cardiology. Atherosclerosis is easily experimentally produced by giving herbivores like rabbits or monkeys high levels of cholesterol from eggs or saturated animal fat. However, atherosclerosis cannot be induced in other omnivores like dogs or carnivores like cats, lions, and tigers. So maybe we aren't omnivores after all. That's a subject for another video. Also, if you take that rabbit, you cannot induce atherosclerosis through risk factors like smoking by blowing cigarette smoke in its face. Highlighting that the only risk factor required for clogged arteries is a cholesterol problem, making it more than just a risk factor, but the likely cause. And as for Alzheimer's specifically, quote, they found that brain plaques, a hallmark of Alzheimer's, began to appear in the brains 15 years before memory problems became evident. But how does this brain plaque actually lead to Alzheimer's disease? It starts with the high consumption of cholesterol, which is only found in animal products, as well as saturated fat, the majority of which comes from animal products. Both of those increase clouding factors in your blood, which then leads to fatty deposits on your artery walls, which over time build up, lining your artery completely. This makes it difficult for blood to get into your brain. It's kind of like a clogged pipe. It's officially called hypoperfusion. The areas in the brain with the most clogging leads to a particularly low level of blood flow in that area, which kills it off, creating sort of a Swiss cheese pattern. And this just destroys memories as well as one's ability to recognize people, things like that. It is becoming pretty clear by this point that cholesterol is the problem. So what is the ideal level of cholesterol and how can we get it there? Here's a study which is not biased toward vegans at all because it was partially done by Lauren Cordain, one of the founders of the Paleo Diet, they say that the ideal level of LDL or bad cholesterol is between 50 and 70. And here's a graph showing how intimately linked our LDL cholesterol levels are with atherosclerosis as measured by the narrowing of arteries. And here's a chart of the total cholesterol levels of various indigenous cultures as well as animals compared to the average American. Now for our best shot at preventing Alzheimer's. Here is that same graph with vegetarians added in and now with vegans added in. And keep in mind this is the average vegan including all the junk food vegans. Preventing Alzheimer's is the same as preventing heart disease, stroke, and erectile dysfunction. It's about preventing atherosclerosis 
and for virtually all people who eat a Western diet over the age of three, it's about reversing atherosclerosis. And eating a whole food plant-based diet is a highly effective way to do this as Dr. Esselstyn's famous angiogram shows, there's the coronary heart artery being repaired after eating a plant-based diet. Are there any populations we can look at to substantiate this? Well, looking at the US, remember 11% of people over 65 have Alzheimer's. If you look at the Okinawans, whoever, which are the closest we have to a plant-based culture, all of their dementia combined is 6.7% of the population over 65. The Okinawans are noted for being extremely mentally sharp even into their old age and even over 100 years old. Here's a study showing what they ate in 1949. If you total up all of the animal products that they ate, they ate about the equivalent of half of one egg a day. That's about a single bite. To drive it all home from the journal Neurobiology of Aging, the number one recommendation to prevent Alzheimer's is quote, minimize your intake of saturated fats and trans fats. Saturated fat is found especially in dairy products and meats. Trans fats are found in many snack foods. They then go on to recommend a plethora of whole plant foods for their protective effects against Alzheimer's. You've probably been made to believe that this whole process is largely dependent on genes. Well, it turns out if you don't eat a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol, then the genes don't really matter. Nigerians have the highest incidence of the Alzheimer's gene, APOE4, yet they have some of the lowest incidences of Alzheimer's, until they move to the US, of course. This is because the APOE gene controls the amount of cholesterol-carrying protein in your brain. As this study shows, chronic changes in blood cholesterol lead to changes in APOE levels in the brain. So if you cut the artery clogging fats and cholesterol out of your diet, you can silence the genes. It's a bit like how your genes might make you a hemophiliac, but you're probably not gonna bleed to death unless you get cut or stabbed or something. And in the case of Alzheimer's, animal products are the razor. At some point, you've probably heard about the effects of metals on Alzheimer's. Well, it seems that they don't cause Alzheimer's, but they may just exacerbate the issue. Here's a study done in Chicago that looked at the relationship between copper intake, saturated fat intake, and cognitive decline. They point to not just high dietary copper intake, but also high intake through copper supplementation. They say, quote, copper intake was not associated with cognitive change among persons whose diets were not high in these fats, which are saturated and trans fats. In other words, stay away from saturated fat and trans fats and copper won't be an issue. This fits perfectly into the understanding that atherosclerosis causes Alzheimer's because metals themselves wouldn't be able to cause it, but saturated fat and metals can exacerbate the issue. So conquer cholesterol on a whole foods plant-based diet and keep your brain from clogging and having a mind attack. If you decide to eat a plant-based diet, it's a good idea to supplement B12. Well, rabbits might be able to get all the B12 they need from dirty veggies. Our soil is a little bit too sterile at this point. Finally, minimize plant sources of saturated fat and maximize plant sources of omega-3s to cover all of your bases. Thank you for watching.